Utah's landscape might be one of the most unique in the country. From flat expanses of salt that seem to go on for miles to vibrant red rock formations that make you feel like you've landed on Mars, this state is something of a natural playground. It boasts five national parks and a whopping 40-plus state parks for visitors and residents to explore. Plus, with an array of small towns, ski mountains and an urban hub in Salt Lake City, it's difficult to get bored in Utah. On the other hand, there are so many adventurous options and fun things to do at your fingertips, you may have difficulty deciding where to begin. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 things to do in Utah. And wait till you see what's at number 3 that we're going to be showing in this video. Something you had never even thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Let's cut to the chase. At 10, it's Arches National Park. Soaring sandstone arches and towering hoodoos, whatever they are, make Arches National Park in eastern Utah one of the most striking places in the state. Plus, the snow-capped La Salle Mountains in the distance only add to this area's beauty. If you only have a few hours to explore, drive the 18-mile scenic road, the imaginatively called Arches Scenic Drive, to enjoy a brief but thorough tour of the park. You'll pass Balanced Rock, as well as the Windows area, which is a home to a large concentration of arches. Luckily, there are plenty of spots to pull over and admire the views. If you have a full day or more, get out of the car and explore on foot. Some of the most popular hikes in the park include the trails to Delicate Arch and Double Arch. If you're looking for less crowded hikes, there are plenty of hidden gems. The three-mile round-trip hike to Navajo Arch is a relatively easy excursion that brings you to a quiet arch in a fairy tale-like setting. Rich Arch is another lightly trafficked route, three and a half miles round trip with stellar views. Visitors recommend touring the park in the late fall or early spring for cooler temperatures and fewer tourists than the busy summer season. Thanks to the park's convenient location near the town of Moab, you can stroll downtown and grab a bite to eat after a long day of hiking. Make sure to take those muddy boots off though. Entrance to the park costs $30 per car and the pass is valid for seven days. At nine, Canyonlands National Park. If you can't make it to the Grand Canyon or you're just seeking a less crowded park with similar geological features, consider Canyonlands National Park in southeastern Utah. The Colorado and Green Rivers cut through the park and act as a natural divider between the three designated sections. Island in the Sky, the Needles and the Maze. Island in the Sky is the most popular among visitors as it contains diverse hiking opportunities, a scenic driving route with ample pull-out spaces and picnic areas. Some of the best stops include Mesa Arch and Aztec Butt, hmm, according to visitors. If you have time, schedule a stop at Dead Horse Point State Park, which is located near the entrance to Island in the Sky to witness a spectacular sunset over the canyon. For a more off-the-grid experience, head to the park's Needles section via Route 211, which ends at the Needles Visitor Center. Note, you cannot drive directly from Island in the Sky to the Needles within the park. This area is reserved for more advanced hikers and is overall less accessible. Well, that's not me then. However, dramatic views of towering sandstone columns await those who make the trek. The Maze is the most remote and least visited area of the park. Not surprising really, I guess. This section features difficult roads and very challenging trails. That sounds like impossible. You shouldn't travel there without the proper equipment and the ability to be self-sufficient for at least three days. So take plenty of bacon. Canyonlands National Park costs $30 per car to enter. The pass is valid for seven days. In at 8, Bryce Canyon National Park. The whimsical landscape of this park in southern Utah will amaze travelers young and old. Visitors can explore mazes of towering hoodoos, there it is again, as they descend into the canyon or admire them from above while strolling along the rim. Bryce Canyon is the smallest of Utah's five national parks and it's easy to conquer in a day. If you visit for a day trip, be sure to stop at Sunset Point and Sunrise Point to take in the views not necessarily at sunset or sunrise. Then hike the Queen's Garden and Navajo Loop trails for an approximately three-mile tour of the land. Those who would rather do a scenic driving tour of the park can start at Rainbow Point, located on the southern end of the park, and enjoy views throughout the 38-mile round-trip excursion. If you have more time, opt for one of the park's more challenging hikes, such as the eight-mile Fairyland Loop or the strenuous Alp and Back four-mile hat shop trail. The park is open 24 hours a day and costs $35 to enter. Entrance passes are valid for seven days. 
most people choose to park at the Sunset Point lot, which acts as the trailhead for an array of hikes. Even the views from this parking lot are spectacular, so you can enjoy it from the comfort of your own car. You can drive to this park from St. George, about 140 miles southwest, or Moab, around 245 miles northeast, or plan to stay overnight in one of the nearby hotels. Next up at 7, Zion National Park. Zion is Utah's most visited national park and for good reason. It's characterized by the gaping Zion Canyon that measures 15 miles long and 3,000 feet deep, drawing adventurers looking for one-of-a-kind canyoneering opportunities. What's canyoneering? Meanwhile, hikers will find an expansive network of trails to choose from, with many routes offering adrenaline-pumping experiences. That's dangerous, then. Angel's Landing, one of the most famous and highly trafficked routes in the park, starts at the Grotto Trailhead and weaves through narrow spaces and along steep, stomach-lurching drops. Hmm, the trail is only a five-mile round-trip excursion, but with a 1,488-foot elevation change, it is strenuous and not recommended for anyone with a fear of heights. That's definitely me. Less intense but equally beautiful hikes include the approximately 3-mile Watchman Trail, the 3.5-mile Paris Trail and the 2-mile Middle Emerald Pools Trail. If you drive the park's scenic road on US Highway 9 from Interstate 15 to Mount Carmel Junction, you can view Angel's Landing and other attractions from below. Past visitors recommended planning your Zion trip for the late fall or early spring to avoid yet again the sweltering temperatures and swarms of tourists that plague the summer season. Entrance to the park costs $35 per car. For easy access to the park, located in southwestern Utah, consider staying in nearby St. George. And now at 6, Bonneville Salt Flats. About 100 miles west of Salt Lake City, you'll find one of the country's most unique natural attractions, the Bonneville Salt Flats. This area features 30,000 acres of dazzling yet desolate white earth surrounded by mountains. The flats are a result of the ancient Lake Bonneville, which dried up long ago and left an otherworldly landscape behind. Visitors can drive their cars directly onto the flats or park in the lot and walk the flats on foot. In fact, there is even a section of the flats, the Bonneville Speedway, which is designated for car racing. The flat landscape and the salt's moisture balance makes for prime racing conditions. Some of the fastest driving speeds, more than 500 miles per hour, have been recorded on these flats, and there are racing events held here each year, including Bonneville Speed Week and the Bonneville Motorcycle Speed Trials each August. The journey to the Salt Flats is essentially a straight shot on Interstate 80 from Salt Lake City. Travelers recommend bringing snacks and water with you, since you won't pass many towns or stores on the trip, especially if it's salty. If you're venturing to the flats in the winter months, be sure to check weather updates as it's not safe to drive on the flats in wet conditions. The Bonneville Salt Flats are free to enter. Next up at 5, the aforementioned Salt Lake City. Known for being the centre of American Mormonism, Utah's capital city is home to plenty of religious and historic attractions. Spend some time in Temple Square to see the immense Salt Lake Temple and learn more about the Mormon faith from church representatives. For those interested in learning about the Great Salt Lake or the area's Native American populations, visit the National History Museum of Utah, which is located about five miles from the square. The Utah Museum of Fine Arts is also a great place to spend the afternoon, according to travelers. Plus, it's situated near the University of Utah campus, as well as the large botanical garden and amphitheater at Red Butt Garden. What's more, Salt Lake City offers an array of international cuisines and breweries. Some visitors' favourites include Bewilder Brewing Company, Fisher Brewing Company and Ketos Brewing. Families visiting the area may enjoy stopping at the Hoggle Zoo or the Redwood Drive-In Theatre. There are plenty of luxurious accommodation options as well as budget-friendly properties here as well. Check out the best hotels in Salt Lake City before booking your stay. At 4, it's Lake Powell. Deep blue water surrounded by towering red rock cliffs make the picturesque Lake Powell well worth a trip. Known for being the second largest human-made reservoir in the country, this popular summer destination is located in southern Utah and spills into northern Arizona. The water is used for swimming as well as water sports such as kayaking and paddleboarding. Motorized water sports including jet skiing and motorboating are also allowed. There are many equipment rentals in the area. The reservoir is encircled by 2,000 miles of shoreline, although much of it is only accessible by foot or by recreational vehicle. 
This means that there are quite a few hiking opportunities on its shores, including traveller-approved areas like Davis Gulch and West Canyon. While there are some hotels in the surrounding area, previous visitors agreed that staying in a houseboat is the best way to experience Lake Powell. Many of these houseboats, which you can book in advance from a marina, come equipped with kitchens, grills, bedrooms and even water slides for fun. Easy access to the lake. You don't need a boating license to rent a houseboat, but many rental companies will offer renters a lesson before they depart on their floating home. And now into the top three, at three, Capitol Reef National Park. Although Capitol Reef is not as well known as Utah's other national parks, the lack of tourists makes it all the more exciting to explore. Located north of Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument and west of Canyonlands, this park offers diverse terrain. You can see much of Capitol Reef National Park from your car. The main scenic drive stretches just about eight miles and takes passengers past the park's notable geological features like the Moenkopi Formation, Water Pocket Fold, Grand Wash and Wingate Sandstone. You can also opt to drive the nearly 60-mile Cathedral Valley Loop, which weaves through a more remote section of the park, passing massive sandstone structures like Temple of the Sun, the peak of which sits nearly 6,000 feet above sea level. Visitors who would rather explore the park on foot have many memorable hikes awaiting. The easy-to-moderate Hickman Bridge, one-mile round trip, and Cassidy Arch, 1.7 miles round trip trails, showcase Capitol Reef's stunning sandstone arches, while the leisurely Grand Wash Trail, 6.25 miles round trip, brings hikers through narrow canyons. The Fruta Historic District, home to old Mormon settlements, a schoolhouse, and a fruit orchard, is also worth exploring on foot. Entrance to the park costs $20 per car. Many travellers recommend exploring Capitol Reef on the way to or from Bryce Canyon by the 124-mile scenic Byway 12. And now at number two, visit downtown Moab. If you're planning to visit Arches National Park or Canyonlands National Park, Moab is the best place to hang your hat, so to speak. There are plenty of lodging options in town no matter your budget. While many people travel to Moab because of its proximity to many natural wonders, the downtown area itself is also worth exploring. You can visit Moab's cafes, peruse food truck options and sample an array of cuisines, including mouth-watering barbecue and Thai favourites from downtown restaurants. There is also a popular brewery and distillery you can check out. You'll find art galleries and independent shops selling pottery, traditional Native American jewellery and souvenirs. Recreational activities abound in the city, including river rafting, horseback riding, rock climbing and all-terrain vehicle tours. Past visitors recommended booking an ATV tour or renting a vehicle through the Moab Tour Company. And don't miss the chance to drive along the Colorado River and even stop at wineries along the riverbank. That's not driving in the river, by the way, but that is wineries, so you can get wet on the inside. After the sun sets, head to Dead Horse Point State Park or pretty much anywhere outside the downtown area for excellent stargazing opportunities. And finally, drum roll please for number one, Ski Park City. Park City is the perfect winter playground for skiers and adventurers. There are two major ski resorts in the area, as well as a lively downtown and ample upscale accommodation options. Park City Mountain Resort, the largest ski resort in the country, offers a plethora of shredding options for skiers and snowboarders of all levels. There are more than 330 trails across 7,300 plus acres of skiable terrain. Adrenaline junkies can hit any of the eight terrain parks, which vary by difficulty level. Deer Valley Resort offers a more intimate ski setting compared to its counterpart thanks to its smaller size and prevalence of more beginner-friendly trails. Plus, snowboarders are not allowed at Deer Valley, which many skiers appreciate. The runs are longer, but the lift tickets are more expensive than those at Park City Mountain Resort. Both mountain resorts offer tons of fresh powder, typically seeing an average of 355 inches annually, making the slopes in Park City skiable from November to April. No matter which resort you choose, you won't be far from the city centre. The historic downtown area offers a multitude of boutiques, pubs and fine dining experiences. Great! Galleries and theatres bring life to the town as well. If you're visiting in the summer, there are often farmers markets, festivals and events as well. Best of all, free buses will transport you around the area, so there's no driving to be done there. And there you have the top 10 places to visit in Utah. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below, share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel Trip Extreme for more fantastic top 10 lists. See you next time, travelers.